please come at once. Your mother's grave has been vandalized. This is an emergency. I have to get to the cemetery as soon as possible. Please. Hi, Jocelyn. How are you doing? Nice to speak to Hi. you. Nice to see you. Did we meet in Barcelona? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think oh, so, okay. no. I thought maybe we had met on summer camp. Years and years and years no, ago. No, I no, I did interviews with. I was. I'm a friend of. I'm a friend of Beto Marini's, and yes. so I did. I did interviews. So you might have seen. Maybe you've seen photographs that I did with the cast okay. over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's probably what it is. <laughs> anyway, nice to nice to actually speak to you face to more or less face to face. Yeah, yes. virtually. Uh -huh. So congratulations on the movie. I, uh, I really, uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I was watching. I was just before just before speaking to you. Now I was I was watching a few interviews, and it was. Um, Mickey said that he uh, he was he's not really kind of a big fan of. Of, audition, of having people do auditions and he kind of handpicked you because he kind of, he's seen you in so many things and he's a big fan. And he said in the past, he would have been starstruck to have, to have to bumped into you. So <laughs> I think he kind of sent it directly to, you know, this project. What was it about, about the project that drew you in with, aside from the fact that he was a big fan already of, of your work? Oh, well, that's so sweet to hear from you. Um, but yeah, we, you know, he sent the script. Um, I immediately liked the script and the, the mythology and the the sense of place um, was really what was interesting, and also it was a page turner. You know, reading it for the first time, uh, I felt like the audience like would be because the audience is really learning about this place as Marie is, and I was just intrigued and like wanting to learn more and more about these secrets and this place and the demons and the the pact. Um, so I liked the script so much, and then sitting down with Mickey. Um, He's such a passionate and uh, he just brings so much joy to everything he does and it's very infectious and and I also was a fan of his work, you know, I had seen Darling and Carnage right. Park and and I love, you know, his the casts that he always puts together are always very unique. Um, and when he told me about who he wanted to work on this film, it was, you know, that he was going to try to get Melora Walters and Richard Brake and Joe Swan, you know, everybody who ended up in the movie. Um, I just knew I wanted to sign on as well. Uh -huh. Something that was really interesting is that he said that he wanted this film to feel kind of like um, if you came across like an old battered book and you started to read it and kind of you got pulled into this nightmare, which was quite a strange feeling because I, I don't know if, if you felt the same thing, but when I was watching it yesterday, I kind of felt a strange kind of Wizard of Oz feeling meets Westworld, that kind of thing. Was, yeah. was there any specific books or anything that he told you to read or to watch to kind of get into that kind of vibe, that tone? Yes, yeah. In fact, his a couple of his touch points were these Southern Gothic short stories. Um, and that's something that I love too. I've been a, you know, a constant reader. And as someone from New England, like I kind of always love those like Victorian ghost stories or the, you know, the witchy Salem stories. Um, this one, uh, he had mentioned A Rose for Emily, uh, which is a Faulkner right. story. Um, and that's kind of like about the power of death and like an overbearing parent. Um, and then he also mentioned, um, Summer People by Shirley Jackson, which is kind of like about, you know, city people coming to a small town um, and just being kind of clueless and snobby and and maybe judging too harshly the townspeople, but then realizing that actually they are in danger <laughs> from the townspeople or just you just are it's unsettling. So he mentioned those two pieces of literature. He mentioned a few movies too, like in terms of like visuals, but but I think it really was like a literary um jumping yeah, off point. Very, yeah. yeah, definitely. <laughs> Can we please get out of here? Yes. Jesus. What the This is the way we came to it's been one road we've been on the well, entire turn around. time. We gotta get out of here. I have to ask you about the the wardrobe because it just I don't know if, if anyone else ask you about that was that was that handpicked by you or by Mickey because it felt very, I don't know it felt very Hitchcocky or something I don't know it was it felt very specific what you were wearing there all the way through. Yes. Well, I do happen to be a sucker for a turtleneck and a trench coat, um, right. but Mickey Mickey was very specific about that, um, and it does have like this kind of timeless quality yeah. to it. It could be any decade. Um, but our costume designer, Joanna David, is just has such a keen eye. Um, so yeah, the fitting was just so fun to like get to pick which trench we were going to use. Um, and also like the, you know, the jewelry, um, you know, Marie wears a ring um, that her mother had given her. And that was like a, a nice little talisman like to use through the movie as well. And I love Joe Swanberg's wardrobe, everybody's wardrobe, you know, the, the yeah, fishermen no. too, like everything just felt so authentic to each character.
Definitely. And what about the actual island? Because I'm, I knew you were, I know you were drawn, in, drawn into the kind of the idea of this, this setting and the ambience from the, from the get go. No, what was it like when you actually got on set? Because I mean, the film is like a haunted, the island is a haunted house for you. Basically, you go through a haunted house ride, but at the same time, it must have been kind of complicated or strange that you had all these locals kind of looking at what you were doing just off, off camera slightly, you know? Yes, that's the, the movie magic. You know, we, Mickey was expecting it to be like very quiet because we shot in January. Um, but that is also like when like the snowbirds from like New England or Canada come down. So there were quite a few um, people on, you know, outside of the frame that you don't get to see, whether it was like when we got the permits to shut down the main street uh, or when we shot at the sand lot, uh, uh, sand lot? Sand trap. Um, that's uh, the bar that we um, shot at. Like there was just tons of drunk people around, you know, like that. Just been at the bar all day. Um, so yeah, it's you know, you you learn to have like blinders on for that stuff and just stay in the scene. Uh huh. Talking of staying in the scene, um, I believe that Joe and Jeremy are suckers for not staying completely in the scene, and they kind of they like a bit of improvisation. And I think you you kind of played off that and you enjoyed that that to toing and froing, no? Yes, yeah, you know, it's Marie gets to kind of bounce off of all these different characters and it's true both Joe and Jeremy are directors themselves and bring such great instincts um, to their scenes and always have great ideas and can surprise you or change things up, which is so fun for you know to get to improvise in that way. Um, and it really I think lent to especially with Joe like our relationship um, is already kind of tense and there's some stuff that's unspoken or there's something between them. You don't know exactly what it is, but I think, you know, all the little moments that we got to have kind of put that out there without being too explicit. She said that the people on this island made a deal with a demon. George, are you here? Hello? Most of your body of work is, is kind of horror. I mean, uh, I can remember I watched you in uh, Startup and I was like, oh, great, I get to see you do something different. And then you kind of ended horrifically, <laughs> spoiler alert. So, yeah. I mean, what, what are your next plans? Are you plans to carry on doing more horror? Is that kind of the genre that you, you, you most enjoy? Or do you, are, you, are you hoping to kind of branch out and do something else in the near future? Yeah, I mean, I'm open to, you know, any great creative project and, um, you know, with with horror stuff, it's like you get to do you get to do the drama, you get to do the emotional stuff. You, but you also get to have like the high stakes, um, you know, existential or um, physical things too. So you get to do a lot um, in horror and hopefully like those skill sets will lead to other types of projects. And I think that is probably why startup, you know, you probably knew that I could <laughs> scream bloody murder, <laughs> but, um, but, but, you know, those things, that's a crime thriller. Um, so yeah, I love like crime and noir. Um, I really love sci-fi and like minimalist sci-fi, so I'd love to do more of that. Um, yeah, whatever, wherever it takes me. Brilliant. Just it's really good to speak to you. And I uh, wish you the best of luck with this film when it comes out. And I hope to speak to you again uh, sometime soon about another project or maybe in person in Barcelona or wherever it may be. <laughs> Same here. Thanks so much, Howard. It's quite beautiful, you know. The island.